Now, you know that was a pitiful response, so <laughs> you'll have to do that again. Good evening. Now, oh, that sounds like Central California. Haven't been here since 2008. Um, so it's good to be back. Amen. Good to be back. Thank you. A number of you have come up to me and Carol today and expressed your regard and love. And thank you, uh, Elder Keno, for uh, inviting us here. It's just a, a beautiful place uh, to be. In the six years since I've been here, I this year achieved a milestone in my life. Uh, as of June 6, 2014, I have been in the ministry now for 50 years. And I can appreciate your theme from cradle uh, to the grave. <laughs> Journey of the disciple, that has a great deal of meaning to me. Uh, it's, it's, it's been good and to be blessed to have my companion Carol with me through those years except for two for I spent the first two as a single man but this coming August next month Carol and I will celebrate 48 years of marriage. Yeah. Now, that applause is for her. <laughs> she deserves it. She's earned it, living with this, uh, with this fellow. So it's good to be here. But I always take very seriously my assignments, and I have looked with prayerful care at your theme, from the cradle to the grave, the journey of the disciple. And the Lord, almost instantly, as I really focus on the theme, invited me to go back to a passage that I have been to before. Uh, the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, the four stories of lost things the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, and the lost son. There are two lost sons, the youngest and the elder. There are four stories. But he invited me to look at the four familiar stories in the light of your theme. And there will be various ways in which the different speakers will approach the theme, but. The Lord has impressed me to approach the theme from the standpoint of how these stories picture the church as a discipling agency. Or let me put that differently so I can be clear. The church is to be involved in the work of discipleship. Would you say amen? That is our function. It's not an option, it's who we are. And in studying fresh, I realized that before Luke 15, in Luke 14, starting verse 25, Jesus is discussing the requirements of discipleship, and then because there are no chapter divisions in the Greek Bible, then what we call Luke 15 picks up with these familiar words, then drew near unto him all the Pharisees and scribes, or to hear him, and they murmured against him, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. This man, praise God. Thank God that Jesus is guilty. Y'all, 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 way too calm for me, brothers and sisters. Hey, thank God that we serve a Savior whose work is to receive sinners and to fellowship with them. Amen. If that was not his function, why would we be here? In fact, how could we be here? So Luke 15 is a backward description of the work of the church. We should be in the business of 
receiving sinners. Now, that's no big deal for us because we're sinners. Uh, okay, you didn't say amen to that, but I'll, I'll help you out. Amen. Amen. We should not, as the church, be uncomfortable receiving what we are. Sinners should be comfortable with us because we are sinners. And if we do not forget from which we've come, then we should have a constant welcome mat as disciples of Christ of the broken and the fallen. What do you say? No, no, no. There's something going on here. We got to look at it. But let's pray first. Father, help me. Amen. <laughs> let's go to the... Let's go to the, the book of Luke, the book of Luke, the sixth chapter and the 40th verse, Luke 6 and verse 40. The disciple, watch this now, don't miss this, this is Jesus talking. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Okay, okay. We've said the work of the church is to be a functioning disciple. And disciples do what the master did. Okay? And Jesus says, the servant, that's us, the doulos, we are not above. If, 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 if our master stretched and searched and went and cradled and saved and caressed and held the sinner, then we should be doing the same. Is that all right? And so Jesus says, uh, the servant can't be better. If, 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 if the master puts his life on the line for the lost sheep, then so should we. So should we. And then look at Luke. Uh, Luke 19 and verse 10. Luke 19 and verse 10. You did bring your Bible, didn't you? Or your phone or something to look at the Bible with. <laughs> it's a new day. It's a new day, y'all. 1910, uh, for the Son of Man. Ah! Oh, see, in case we didn't know what the Master does, in Luke 19:10, Jesus speaking says, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save what? Uh, that's what we do. Come on, folk. That's what we do. Amen. See, we, 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 we sometimes act like that, that a, a, a crusade or a, a time of baptism is some special moment in the church. That is what the church is supposed to be doing. In fact, there, 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 there should be a restlessness in your congregation if souls are not being baptized. Well, that was pitiful too, so here I go again. Got to help you. Amen. Amen. We ought to get stirred up, restless. Month after month, the pool never used. Month after month, nobody baptized. Because remember, we are disciples, and the work of the Master is to seek and to save the lost. Therefore, we should be doing it. Notice I said we. I didn't say the pastor should be doing it. You didn't hear me say that, did you? Who did I say? Yeah, su su substitute we for me. Me. Me should be. Not good English, but it sounds good. Me should be. Me should be. So, so Jesus is clear. Now we're just laying the groundwork for Luke 15. Jesus is clear about what we should be doing. Our journey is one of reaching out. In other words, if, if, if you are appreciating, and I do appreciate, what Jesus has done for you, if you really filled up with it, you've got to tell somebody. Huh? So Jesus says, that's why I came. Now, as early as Genesis 12, verses 1 and 2, 
when the Lord God first called Abraham, he said, I'm going to make you a blessing. Remember he said that? That was his first call to discipleship, to his organized people. And then in Deuteronomy 28, he says, he says, he says to the Jewish nation, you will be a blessing to the world. See, that's, that's your call. There, there, there's something that radiates from you, that warms and touches other people. Uh, uh, daily filled, daily thankful. And if you've forgotten how to be thankful, think about from whence God called you. You don't get in the church and get comfortable and act like you've never done so and so and so and so. No, there, 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 ought to be a, there ought to be a passion and compassion in us as we see people struggling because we know we too have struggled. And so he said to the Jewish people, he said, look, I've called you not because you're a righteous people. He says, in fact, you're a stiff-necked and hard-headed people, but I've called you to be a blessing, and that blessing oozes out of us towards others. And so we're to be disciples. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but what? Finish it, finish it. What, 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 what is it? But Christ does what? Lives in me. That's the sunshine in me, my brother. That's, that's, that's the thing I can't, I, can't, I can't turn off. If Christ is really in your life, you can't turn him off. He just pours out of you. In, in the same way he does when you've had an experience that, that you enjoy. I mean, uh, you, you, buy, you buy a new car. You, I mean, I, 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 recently we bought a, a new SUV, a, a, a Jeep Cherokee, and, and, and I love the car. It, 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 it stops itself. It, it slows down itself. It, it, it does all kinds of things by itself. And I'm, 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 I'm talking about it because I, I'm enjoying it. And so, so don't, 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 don't tell me you don't know how to witness all you got to do is go to Macy's and find a good sale and you start talking. Don't tell me you don't, don't tell me that. Don't want to hear that. We know how to witness. Somebody say amen out there. When we have a story to tell about something that has really touched us, we tell it. And so, and so, and so the Bible says, I'm crucified, but I live, I've died, but I want to tell somebody that though I'm dead, I'm alive. How? Christ lives in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jesus, Luke 15 now, I know what I'm preaching on, Luke 15. <laughs> Jesus, having talked to them, Luke 14 starting in verse 25, about the woes of discipleship, goes to this dinner. This is our Vegas background. And the dinner's held at Matthew's house. Matthew is a publican. And the Pharisees and scribes won't go in the party, but they follow Jesus to the party. According to the background I've studied, Jesus now has finished the party and is standing out on the steps. And the Pharisees and scribes, I don't know if they're upset because they didn't have any Vegelinks and Kool-Aid in the party or what the problem is. <laughs> but they're standing outside murmuring, this man, look at him, look at him. Receives sinners, eats with them. And I guess Jesus is just, he's tired, he's filled up following him around all the time, murmuring and criticizing. <laughs> Woe be unto those in the church. Can I talk about it for two minutes? Yeah. Let me talk about it for two minutes. Yeah. Woe be unto those in the church whose only energy is spent in criticizing others. God spare us that kind of Adventism. And so here they are, murmuring, Christ comes out, and they accuse him to his face. Jesus, thank God for Jesus, 
takes no time to argue with them, but tells four stories. Bam, 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 bam. And the first story is about a sheep. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that sheep which is lost until he finds it? Now, Jesus begins with a simple, straight, logical, pragmatic issue. You're upset because I've just had a dinner party with publicans and harlots and so forth. And you know, I just have to pause here and reflect. I, I, I just, most of you would not be sitting here tonight if Jesus didn't enjoy garbage. You do realize, and if this insults you, good. You do realize, you do realize that Jesus hobnobs with the worst people in the universe. This is the only sinful planet. The only place where people kill, steal, lie, commit adultery, have war, shoot down planes. And Jesus chose to come here. How come you're not saying amen? amen? Nobody else would come but Jesus. He sends his guardian angels to keep us, but Jesus came himself. And, and, and this, this is one of the reasons why I, I, I don't believe, in, I don't believe in, in, in UFOs. They aren't coming here. <laughs> They've heard about us. Ain't nobody coming here from Mars, Jupiter. They're not coming. They've heard about us. We will rip them off. But Jesus came. Somebody say Jesus came. Hey, hey, he came here. This man does receive, and he gets dirty with us. Uh, for Jesus to put on our flesh, our flesh is polluted. And then I don't know why did that marvelous statement, Desire of Ages, page 25 says, he shall forever have human nature. Y'all just way too calm for me. <laughs> so, 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 so when they make this accusation against Christ in Luke 15, he's not bothered at all. He says to them, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Which one of you? If you had a lost sheep, would not leave the ninety and nine and go after that sheep which is lost. Now, immediately a conundrum is developed in the story. How come Jesus is going after the sheep by himself? What are them ninety nine doing? <laughs> come on, y'all. Stay with me. Why is he out there scuffling, trying to find this stupid sheep high on grass? <laughs> don't, don't look for that in the text. It just kind of <laughs> just kind of kind of hit me. Why is he why? Why is Jesus out there by himself? Why is it? Why is it that young man in your congregation who's gotten hooked on marijuana or dope, why, why are only a few people praying? Why isn't the whole church praying? Why is that woman who, who's, who's wrestling, that man wrestling with their shaky marriage and their spouse has left them, why are only a few folk praying? Why isn't the whole church praying? Why? It's almost, as, it's almost as if the fold find pleasure in the fold. The church is not a fellowship club. It's a disciple agency. See, I want you to see the church in these parables. And so we've got a problem here because Christ now is illustrating what the fold ought to be doing. And so we see here Jesus 
going. And, and, and you shift from verse 4 to verse 5 suddenly, and when he hath found it. But the Bible does not detail all that goes on to find it, creating comfortableness, creating welcomeness, so that when that person comes back, they feel they don't have to explain why they, why they were gone. See, it's none of your business. If I've been away from church from five years and show up, it's none of your business why I was gone. See, the discipling spirit of the church, get this, folk, the function of the church is to help folk feel comfortable and accepted. That's its function even if they have smoke on their breath, comfortable and accepted. Even if they have enough jewelry to decorate a Christmas tree, comfortable and accepted. Hey, even if their dress has got a split halfway up the thigh, comfortable and accepted. Why? Because all I'm, all, 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 all I'm concerned about is that they're back. Why they were gone, none of my business. What they look like when they come back, none of my business. I'm just rejoicing that they are back. I'm just happy that some lost sheep came back to the fold full of lost sheep. See, folks, the difference between the sheep that left and the sheep that stayed is not their condition. It's just their courage. See, a lot of them sheep in the fold that didn't go wasn't because they didn't want to go. That grass was looking good to them, too. <laughs> a lot of folk in the church, as we'll see in tomorrow night's sermon, a lot of folk in the church are lost sheep. And so in this, and so, and so in this, in this discipling instruction, in this discipling instruction, Jesus now is getting us right where we live and simply saying, look, there is a problem, and the problem is there are people wandering away. And as far as we know, they, this, see, this, this, this lamb that left, he could have left because he couldn't stand the fold. Come on, y'all. Is this sermon too rough for you? <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to preach it anyhow. <laughs> see, 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 see. How did the fold treat this? Maybe he got tired of them criticizing the way he dressed. He got tired of them criticizing the music. He likes music where you have to clap your hands and pat your feet. He ain't turned on by blessed assurance. <laughs> nice hymn, but that don't turn him on. He got tired of walking in church and feeling out. See, maybe the reason why he left was not the grass, but the fold. I want you to think about it. So when you leave camp meeting, I want you to think about, do I attend a church that makes lostness comfortable? Do I attend a church that allows difference to be accepted? Do I attend a church where we give more praise to God than gossip about people? See, the Bible doesn't tell us, my good brother president, why the sheep left. We just know he left. And we focus on the sheep. Oh, sheep is why he's bad, broken, he's messed up, he didn't love the Lord, didn't keep the commandments, hadn't read enough Ellen White. That's why he left. No, he may have left because he was sick and tired of that fold and their attitude. And one thing for sure, read the story. They don't do, the 99 don't do one thing to get him back. Jesus is out there scuffling by himself, getting dirty by himself, getting scratched by the brambles by himself, stumbling and falling in the dark by himself. I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, 
But in these last days, I want to see God's church become a cauldron of love and acceptance, full of God's spirit and praise, where I don't care what people are going through, they can't wait to get to us on Sabbath and feel the warmth. I want God's church to finally be overswelling with God's Holy Ghost. And our energy is not spent debating about music and, and, and this, that, and the other. And don't get me wrong, some of you who are old-fashioned. No, I, I'm an old-fashioned Adventist. I, I don't believe in wearing jewelry. But I don't think it's none of my business if somebody walks in with, it, with, with jewelry on. At least they came. <laughs> is, is anybody following my sermon so far? See, she said, she said the, the, the servant is not greater than the master. So what is the master doing? The master is hobnobbing with harlots. The master is hobnobbing, hobnobbing with, with, with publicans. The, the master is rubbing shoulders with sinners. So how can we be greater? And this idea that the church is the society of the saints is ridiculous. The church is the society of the saved. From sin. And for most of us, our journey from the cradle to the grave is not over after, after we get in the church. We're still developing. The elders still are wrestling with sin. The pastor is still wrestling with sin. Come on, somebody. The choir members are wrestling. So the, the fold, how dare the fold? And, and look at the spirit. And when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders. His shoulders. Let me tell them over here. <laughs> his shoulders. See, 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 see. He could have taken a rope. Come on, y'all. And put a rope around the neck of the sheep. Huh? Come on. And drug him back to the fold. They'd have enjoyed that. See, 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 he got him. He got him. Here he come. Here he come. But he shuts their mouth. They can't say anything. When he comes back, he's hugging. He's holding. He's carrying the sheep. Come on, somebody. There's nothing the foe can say but amen. I love it. I love Jesus. I love the messages that he sings. See, he's showing us what should be the spirit of the church toward the person who's coming in? You know, nobody, nobody. You know, the, Advent, the Advent message is a strong message. You, you, you don't get that thing overnight. First, you've got to give up the pig's feet. Start there. Is that up? Oh, yeah, you got to get rid of that. All the hogs got to go. <laughs> Come on, Chad, you got to start somewhere. Now, the brother's been eating it all his life. And he comes in, he puts it down. But no, 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 that's not good enough for us. We wanted to give up pickles and mustard. He just gave up the pig. <laughs> Do not hand him counsels on diets and foods. He's not ready yet. You're not ready yet. Somebody say amen out there. Let, 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 let the brother get in. Let him, let him, he just, he just, he just put down the liquor. So he may still drink some carbonated drinks. It's all right. It's not the time to discuss carrot juice. He just gave up <laughs> alcohol. He just put it down to get baptized. She took off the jewelry to get baptized. Okay, took it all off. Pastor wouldn't baptize us, she took it off. She comes back next week with it on. Shut your mouth. <laughs> she came back. See, I'm talking about the fold. See, the, the parable is more about the fold than the sheep. See, I don't know, I don't know how you read the parable, but I'm concerned that the fold ain't doing nothing. 
just gathered together in the fold, singing hymns, reading the Sabbath school quarterly, <laughs> listening to tapes by Vanderman. You know, that's all they doing. <laughs> Brother's broken and torn up. He's all scarred and messed up. He's not sure where he fits. He's not found himself in Christ yet. Yes, he wandered away. But there are people who sit in church every Sabbath and their brains wander away. So Jesus, oh, I love it. I love it. Let me just, let me enjoy it for a minute. He grabs that lamb. And there is no indication in the scripture that there's any lecture from the shepherd <laughs> to the lamb. Somebody say amen out there. Amen. He doesn't find the lamb. The lamb is hanging off a cliff somewhere. Now, you know you oughtn't be all hanging over that cliff. <laughs> Ellen White says, <laughs> hanging over the cliff is not a good idea. <laughs> Folk, you need to listen to me. We're talking here about discipling. The servant is not greater than the master. If the master grabs the sheep and keeps his mouth shut, then the least we can do is welcome the sheep and keep our mouths shut. Amen. Grabs that lamb. We have no idea what the master has gone through. Ellen White talking about this parable says that you will be amazed. She says when we get to heaven and our guardian angel shows us what Christ has gone through to save us. She says we will be silent. We will take off our crowns and cast them at the feet of the Savior. Amen. We'll recognize we have nothing for which to boast. Why? It's all Jesus. Not my Sabbath keeping, Jesus. Not what I eat, Jesus. Not how I dress, Jesus. Yes, I do those things because I love him, but those are not the things that commend me. It's the love of God toward me that makes me valuable. Thank you, God. You cannot, you cannot keep enough Sabbaths to be holy. You cannot eat enough chocolates to be holy. You cannot, you cannot drink enough celery juice to be holy. But you can bathe in the love of God. Amen. He comes over the hill. Now, you know the fold's been talking. Well, that's what we do in the fold. We are experts at talking in the fold. You know, the silly debates that Seventh-day Adventists get into. Is there really, we'll spend all afternoon, is there really a sanctuary in heaven? And oh, we get all stirred up and we find text, read Ellen White, we'll bring a specialist in. Let him lecture us all afternoon. Is there really a sanctuary in heaven? Folks, I'm going to tell you something now. You know, you're going to think I'm a heretic. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care. I want to get to heaven. When I get there, if there's a sanctuary, good. I'll enjoy it. But I'm not going to spend Sabbath afternoon debating about whether there's a sanctuary in heaven. See how quiet you are? You really don't, you, you, you don't want to say amen to it because you feel kind of funny. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't say I didn't believe in the sanctuary. I didn't say that. I simply said, that's not an issue of salvation for me. Amen. Debates on the nature of Christ. Number one, it's too deep for you. <laughs> it, you can't, Ellen White, see, what? No, we want to quote Ellen White. She already said, you can't understand that subject. So why are you having a debate about it? <laughs> Did Jesus really have human nature, how human was he, how divine was he? I don't know. <laughs> Never preached on it. Never, ain't going to preach on it. Ain't got, I just want to get to heaven. 
then I'll have eternity. If he wants to break it down to me, I'll listen. While I'm eating from the fruit of the tree, I'll, I'll listen. Yeah. But this is not big with me. Here's what's, what's, here's what's, what's big with me is that folk are dying. Folk are confused. Folk are afraid. Folk are, that's big with me. Let's talk about that. What are we, what's the fold going to do? Now, are we going to be a celebration church or a regular church? Ooh. Well, first of all, any church that's not celebrating the goodness of God ain't worth my time. Yeah. Celebration worship. Well, any worship celebrates God. No, you, you, now I know, you know, some folk are very conservative. You know, they, they think that making a sound in church is, is heresy. And that's all right. Fine, come on in. Be quiet the whole time. It's not going to bother me because I'm going to shout <laughs> right next to you. Sit there quiet as a mummy. Hallelujah! <laughs> Praise God! Listen to me. We have allowed our energies to be divided over things that have nothing to do with the work of the master. The master is out after sheep. The master is hugging sheep. The master is, that's, the servant is not greater than the master. The master gets dirty, soiled. I want your church to become a comfort zone for the lost sheep. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes, sir. Otherwise, these camp meetings, all these years of camp meetings, what do they mean unless they translate into our churches being outposts of love and mercy and acceptance for whoever. We face some challenges. Let me get right on up in your stuff now. See, what are you going to do about the homosexual and the lesbian? What are you going to do? See, homosexual acts are a sin. Homosexuality is a condition. Homosexual acts are a sin. A man having sex with a man is a sin. Clear. A woman having sex with a woman, a sin. Clear. But a person fighting a battle with, a battle with his sexuality, they're to be loved and prayed for. Come on, somebody. By the way things are going, even here in California, the day may come when you'll have two men walking in your church lobby, holding hands, Mr. and Mr., not Mr. and Mrs., Mr. and Mr. What you gonna do? <gasps> no, for let's be real. You know how we are. Pastor, Pastor, they're in the lobby, they're holding hands. <laughs> Go in that church. First of all, shake their hands. Welcome them to church. All right, I know that's rough on you. Amen. Welcome to the church. <laughs> Go in and sit down and listen to the sermon that they're listening to and pray that God's Spirit will do its work. Amen. When it's over, get up. If they don't seem to have to invite them to dinner, let the Spirit of God do its work. Ladies and gentlemen, the servant can't be greater than the master. We got some challenges. And the Lord is wise. Elders, he's not giving us a text on everything. Some things you got to figure out by yourself. But let me give you a piece of advice. If you'll simply follow the law of love. Amen. Now, don't compromise. See, don't compromise. See, the world is saying, well, as long as two folk love each other, it's all right. The Bible says God is love. 
So anything done in the name of love that's not godly ain't love. So we can't buy the world's thinking, but we must remember that we are a saving agency. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stop treating the church as if it's our own backyard. Well, then he said, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep, which was lost. Now, don't you read that phrase lightly, because now we've gotten to the kernel of this evening's sermon. Whose sheep did he find? Ah, 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 my sheep. That young man wrestling with dope who's a member of your church, that belongs to the Lord. That lady walking in church with five kids, each kid has a different father, that's his sheep. That woman who's been married and divorced and married again, his sheep. That person in church who gets up and makes a lot of noise when you want to be quiet, his sheep. That person in the church who's a gossip and a nuisance and whose voice on the phone drives you crazy, his sheep. Come on, somebody. That pastor you don't like, his sheep. That lady who wants to sing every Sabbath and can't carry a note in the bucket, his sheep. Until, hey, 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 I'm almost done here, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I, yeah, just, I, don't, I don't work. That clock don't bother me. I just, I, when I'm done, I shut up. <laughs> Jesus Christ, in these parables we're going to study, is calling out to his church. He's saying, I'm the master. What does the master do? He goes after sheep. What does the master do? He, he, he puts himself out for those who are lost. What does the master do? He tries and tries and tries. He does not give up. What does the master do? He does whatever it takes to save. And that's your call. The Adventist church has got to be known for more than just keeping the seventh day Sabbath. And what we don't eat. We must be a loving center and people know us that way. And we can be that. The fold, the fold must change. And so he says to the fold, he comes over the hill and he says to the fold, he says to the fold, rejoice. He has to tell the fold to be happy. Are you listening to me? He has to tell the fold, hey, somebody lost is saved. Would you please say amen? He has to say to the fold, forget about your petty stuff. This person who went away from us is back. Why don't you rejoice with me? God forbid that the church has to be asked by the master to celebrate salvation. Here's what the fold missed. He said, my sheep, my sheep, my sheep. He was actually saying, my sheep is coming back to my fold. All of y'all mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, folks. Put your hands together. Celebrate God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My sheep. He claims me as his. You got a song for me? Go on and sing it. As one away from Hallelujah. Now I'm coming home. Is 
that a good song or what? The pains of sin. Thank you, Jesus. Alone I trust. Lord, I cling. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, yes. Sing that chorus now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on home. Come home. Never more to roam. And lost sheep finally got some sense in his head. Open wide. Yeah. Thine arms of love. Feeling pretty good right now? I've wasted many mm. precious years. That goes for the fold, too. Now I'm coming home. Remember, that fold was home, but they were not home. Yes, Lord. Lord, I'm coming. Home. You know it. We're gonna sing it with her. Come on. Coming home. Come on, lift it up now. Coming home. Never to roll. Open wide now. Are you glad you came to church tonight? I need you to stand with me now. Let's just stand on up. The church as a seeking shepherd. That's us, my brother. Aren't you glad to be a part of it? It's an honor to work with Jesus. It's an honor to make the wandering comfortable. It's an honor to be loved and saved by Jesus. It's an honor to know his name. It's an honor. And so for the next three sermons, we're gonna talk about this discipling journey as presented in the parables of Luke 15. Tomorrow night, lost in the house. The coin was lost in the house. Lord, help us. You should have stayed home tonight. But you can't miss tomorrow night. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, oh, I love that song. I'm just so glad that she chose that song. Our hearts are coming home. Sometimes, Lord, like the fold, we get so... It, Jesus was talking to those scribes and Pharisees. He was saying to them, look, look, you've gotten wrapped up in your own selfishness. You've forgotten the call I made to your fathers in Deuteronomy. Your religion has become select. You've become spiritual isolationists. You're forgotten. I came to seek and to save the lost sheep, the harlots. But the biggest crime of those scribes and Pharisees is that they did not see their own lostness like the fold. Tonight, Lord, you've ripped it off. You've 
you've made us look again. Uh, it, Pastor Wright said nothing new, nothing fresh, just said it in an updated way maybe. We're challenged by this theme that the leaders of this conference have chosen. From the cradle to the grave, the journey of the disciple. Well, we see now that our journey must involve a trip with Jesus into the brush, to the cliff. That in reaching for the lost, we actually reach for ourselves. Maybe we see that clearer now. Bless us to that end. May we go home thinking about and discussing not so much what Henry Wright said, but what the Spirit said to our hearts. To that end, we pray and we thank you. In Jesus' name, I said, in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Be seated. God bless you.